Welcome back to Hard Work. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain the global atmospheric circulation model, and you should be able to explain how circulation cells transfer heat energy around the world. The sun acts as a heat source for our planet. Heat causes water to evaporate. This is the change from a liquid to water vapour, which is a gas. Heat causes air to rise, and this rising air contains water vapour. The equator is a line which spreads around the centre of the world. This line is imaginary, and in reality, there is no line around the centre of the world. The Earth's equator gets a bigger share of the sun's rays than anywhere else in the world. This means a large amount of moist air rises here. After warm, wet air has risen, more air from elsewhere rushes in to replace the air which has been displaced. Once the air has risen to the top of the atmosphere, it spreads out on top of the air which is rushing in to replace it. During this time, the air loses energy and the water vapour condenses to form clouds, which eventually fall as rain, sleet or snow, and we'll call this precipitation. We call areas where this process occurs low pressure areas. At low pressure areas, precipitation is common, so they tend to have wet climates with high rainfall. Eventually, as the air loses more energy, it cools down. The cooler air then falls back to the Earth's surface. We call these areas high pressure areas. Here, rainfall is much less common, so you tend to have arid climates, and arid is just another name for dry. This is because there is a lack of warm moist air, which means it cannot cool down and fall as rain. The falling air then spreads out again and forms loops of air movement, which we call cells. It is this movement on the surface which we feel as wind. Now the Earth is a sphere and it has angles. Zero degrees at the equator, 30 degrees, 60 degrees and 90 degrees at the poles. Cells operate around the world as we've just seen. These cells are given names. The Hadley cell takes warm air from the equator at zero degrees and moves it 30 degrees north and south of the equator. It also takes cool air from 30 degrees north and south to the equator. The feral cell takes warm air from 60 degrees north and south and moves it to 30 degrees north and south. It also moves cool air from 30 degrees to 60 degrees. The polar cell moves slightly warm air from 60 degrees north and south and it moves it to the poles of the Earth. It also moves cold air from 90 degrees back to 60. Because these cells operate all around the world, we get pressure bands. At zero degrees, or the equator, we have a low pressure band. At 30 degrees, we'll have a high pressure band. At 60 degrees, we'll have a low pressure band. And then at 90 degrees, or the poles, we have another high pressure band. And remember, this applies to both the north and to the south. Now that video is finished, you should be able to explain the global atmospheric circulation model and you should be able to explain how circulation cells transfer heat energy around the world. Thank you very much for watching. Workbooks and test papers which integrate with these videos and online courses are available at our website backrowtutoring.com.